Welcome once again. In this session, we're going to be reading Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 25. The shadow of the law. For the law, having a shadow of the good to come, not the very image of the things, can never with the same sacrifices year by year, which they offer continually, make perfect those who draw near. Or else wouldn't they have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers, having been once cleansed, would have no more consciousness of sins? But in those sacrifices, there is a yearly reminder of sins. For it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, You didn't desire sacrifice and offering, but you prepared a body for me. You had no pleasure in whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Then I said, Behold, I have come, in the scroll of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God. And that is found in Psalm 40, verses 6 through 8. Previously saying, sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you didn't desire, neither had pleasure in them, those which are offered according to the law. Then he has said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first that he may establish the second, by which will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every priest indeed stands day by day serving and offering often the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But he, when he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From that time, waiting until his enemies are made the footstool of his feet. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws, or my Torah, on their hearts. I will also write them on their mind. And that's found in Jeremiah chapter 31. Then he says, I will remember their sins and their iniquities no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brothers, boldness to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the way which he dedicated for us, a new and living way, through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a great priest over God's house, let's draw near with a true heart in fullness of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and having our body washed with pure water. Let's hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let's consider how to provoke one another to love and good works, not forsaking our own assembling together, as the custom of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day, that is the day of judgment, approaching." Notice, we read in the first verse, it says, For the law, having a shadow of the good to come. The good to come, of course, is Jesus. The shadow is found in the law. So the law is like the shadow of Jesus. It holds the same form, the same silhouette. Now, if your Jesus doesn't hold the same form as the law, then I'm sorry, but you have the wrong Jesus. Remember it says in John chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 14 that Jesus is the personification of the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God in the flesh. In other words, he is the Word of God in human form. Don't forget the law or the Torah is the Word of God. Don't forget also that Jesus said to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures because in them you believe that you have eternal life. But those scriptures all speak of me. What scriptures was Jesus talking about? Of course, the Torah would be included in those scriptures, because the Torah is the scripture and it is the word of God. So if you want to know Jesus better, 
read the law of God, read the Torah, because as Jesus said, the Torah is a reflection of Jesus. Everything the Torah says, everything that's written in the Torah is 100% Jesus compliant, is 100% compatible with Jesus. But as it says in this passage, that the law in and of itself, in other words, just ink on paper, doesn't have the power to set you free from slavery to sin. You need to connect with it by faith. You need to look upon Jesus, who is the personification of that law. So another thing we just read here is that the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin. Okay, so again, what happened in those days when somebody was caught in the sin, they could not repent of it. They're a slave to sin, as it says in the scriptures. If you sin, you're a slave to sin. So when that happens and you just cannot find repentance from it, you cannot find the power or the ability to turn from that sin. You are to take your sin sacrifice, take it to the temple, take it to the priest, and watch that animal being sacrificed. And as that animal is sacrificed, as the blood pours out of that animal, you are to connect with it prophetically. You are to say, as the life is poured out from that animal, so the life of my sin gets poured out. Now, it's hard for people to do that because that is an animal. And finally, notice here that it says very clearly, God said, I do not desire sacrifice. Now, there are many places throughout the so-called Old Testament that God said that. Think about David where he says, you don't desire sacrifice, but you desire a broken and contrite spirit. Remember Samuel saying obedience is better than sacrifice. And there are many, many other passages in which God made it very clear I do not desire sacrifice. What I desire is for you to stop sinning, for you to repent. If these videos have been a blessing to you, please go back in the archives. Go to the channel and download every video. Download everything because one day they might be gone. Share them with your friends and family.